Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Welcome to the best expansions coming to retail in the month of October. We actually have a surprising amount of expansions this month. I don't know what it is about October, but everybody's like, we gotta get more before the holidays. We gotta get more. We gotta get more for the games. People want more before the holidays. So, you know, the expansions are very popular this month, and I hope you find something that you're excited about, as always. Oh, remember... My game, I'm Kind of a Big Deal, is coming out November 15th. You can pre-order it now. Thanks, everybody. All right. I'll tell you about expansions now. One of my favorite party games of all time, Green Team Wins, is getting an expansion, the Holiday Party expansion. And I am also weirdly obsessed with Christmas, so this is kind of uh, perfect for me. This is one of my favorite party games and Christmas smashed together. Uh, Green Team Wins plays 3 to 12 players in about 15 minutes, and it is a lightweight party game. Uh, and as you can imagine, this makes it all holiday-themed. Uh, in the game Green Team Wins, you are uh, revealing a question, reading off a question, and everybody is answering that question, and only you only get points if you are in the majority. You have to answer in the majority. So now, this is just a bunch of, you know... Christmas theme, different holiday theme stuff about jingles and about traditions and about, you know, what's the best, um, you know, uh, cocoa, hot cocoa topping? Is it, is it marshmallows? Is it caramel? Is it whipped cream? Huh? Which, I, it's hard to pick. That's the game. And there are different, it's fun to play it too because there, there's a... Different answers. I've seen the same question in different groups and been like, oh, I know how people are going to... No! You voted differently than the other group I played with? You're all separate human beings? Oh, that's bummer. I thought I had an easy point right there. All right. Next up, Asmody, in association with Fantasy Flight, is releasing The Lord of the Rings, the card game, Return of the King Saga expansion. So, the Lord of the Rings card game is um, an expandable card game. It plays 1 to 4 players in 30 to 120 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. And there's uh, been a lot of content for the Lord of the Rings, the card game, over the years. And in fact, this is almost a re-implementation of previous expansions. So, um... This is, uh, this is the final repackaged expansion for the Lord of the Rings, the card game. This expansion combines all of the contents from the Flame of the West and the Mountain of Fire. So if you are looking for like an epic journey and stuff like that, this might be for you. Uh, the, the expansion contains six scenarios that recreate the adventures featured in the third part of the legendary The Lord of the Rings saga. Uh, you'll find over 60 hero cards and player cards which can be used to build or enhance your decks for um, a scenario or a campaign. So yeah, if you like The Lord of the Rings the card game, there's more for you. Uh, but if you want a different Lord of the Rings game, uh, Ares Games is releasing War of the Ring card game Fire and Swords expansion. Um, War of the Ring, the card game, is a card game version of the game War of the Ring, uh, which, you know, is also Lord of the Rings themed, where, you know, the forces of Sauron and, and uh, Mordor are fighting against the, the Fellowship and, and, you know different, uh, uh, you know, good, good people. I don't know why I did this. It feels like that's a pretty classic tale of good versus evil. So, you know, I always just feel like there's gray areas. But, you know, Lord of the Rings, I don't need to do this. They're good. They're, you're, they're good. Uh, so, War of the Ring, the card game, Fire and Swords, features 60 faction decks, 9 new paths, 9 new battlegrounds, and 13 skirmishes, a new type of battleground to represent the smaller settlements and fortifications of the War of the Ring, places like the Fords of Aizen and Bree. Um, this uh, expansion adds three new factions to the game. Um, uh, so, yeah, if you want more to play through uh, for War, War of the Ring, the card game, uh, you got it now. Did I say it? Two to six players... Uh, 60 minutes, medium weight game for War of, the, War of the Ring, the card game. Capstone Games is releasing Arc Nova Zoo Map Pack 2. 
Uh, Ark Nova is one of the most popular games of all time at this point. It is a Euro game about building a zoo and doing it in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different paths to victory. Um, and uh, this plays, I should say, plays one to four players, 90 to 150 minutes, and it is a medium weight game, but maybe, you know, medium plus uh, sort of thing. Uh, so this, uh, as the name sounds, Zoo Map Pack 2, features five new zoo designs. So different puzzle for you to tackle in Ark Nova. Um, the five new, it comes with four game boards, and on one side of the game boards, it's all the same. So if you want to play everybody playing on the same zoo map, you can do that, uh, four maps that are the same. But then on the back side of all of the maps, uh, there is a, a different map and, a, and four different ones. So that's why there's five total in the game. But you can play all with different zoo boards uh, that give you new and interesting abilities uh, and different things to explore. So if you, if you want to play with sort of asymmetric um, zoo boards, you can do that with this Zoo Map Pack 2. Devere Games is releasing the White Castle Matcha. Uh, plays one to four players in 90 to 110 minutes, and it is a medium plus weight game. Um, the White Castle was in my top five games of the year last year. It's a game I really, really loved, uh, where you were taking dice off of these bridges and then, you know, placing dice in various uh, spots to get benefits, and there was a lot, um, some worker placement in it, there was some engine building in it, and you only got nine turns, and it was like every turn was a real puzzle on how to maximize your abilities and your points and stuff like that. It's a game I love because, you know, it's a really strategic game that plays in about 90 minutes, which is is great. Um, so this, uh, this expansion, this is the first expansion for the White Castle, Matcha, it adds a few different things. It adds a new bridge and a new type of dice. There are these green dice and spots where you can place green dice out on the board. There is a new um, board that sort of goes under the main board, uh, at the bottom of the main board, and it gives you new activation spots. It gives you a new meeple uh, type. You have geishas now in the game. Uh, and so, again, just a bunch of different things to explore. New new worker placement spots, new dice placement spots, new um, you know special abilities and all that sort of stuff. So, if you like the White Castle, then check out the White Castle Matcha. Devere Games is also releasing an expansion to Millie Fury called The Masterpieces. And actually, Millie Fury was in my top 10 games of last year as well. So uh, it's another game that I love. Uh, Millie Fury was a, a card drafting game. You were passing cards and then drafting cards and then using them to place sort of your glass diamond pieces out uh, on spots of the board and all these different spots gave you points in different ways and you know you could build cool combos and stuff like that. One of the reasons I liked Millie Fiori so much was it, it, you would have these turns of cascading combos where you're like oh I go here and then that gets me this and then that gets me this this and you just you feel incredible when you have those types of turns. It's definitely like a point salad -y type of game right? You're Every turn you're getting points and sometimes you're getting 30 points and sometimes you're getting three points but you're always getting points and it feel, felt good in that way. Uh, the, the Masterpieces expansion, two to four players, 60 to 90 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. Um, it adds a whole new board element. You put this new board next to the main board, and it extends the sailing that you can do with your ships. Uh, it also, um, there are some new card types in the game, so Doge and Dogate cards that bring points, changed movements, a different order of play. That's one of the interesting things about this expansion. Uh, in the base game, you would just sort of pass the first player marker around, and now it can jump around based on different cards you play, so it's not as regimented in turn order. Um, uh, yeah, the, and there are also these uh, masterpiece cards that can get you cool stuff uh, as well. You, they can get you points, they can get you, uh, help you fill up shop windows, which is a new thing in the game, uh, and can get you additional end game points, that sort of stuff. So just a bunch of different, you know, in a, in a point salad game, you have even more ways to score points 
now with Millie Fury, the Masterpieces. Flat River Games, uh, in association with Yellow, is releasing Ancient Knowledge Heritage. Uh, ancient, this plays one to four players in 30 to 120 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. Uh, ancient Knowledge was a pretty cool card game that came out last year that was all about finding synergies between the cards. You wanted the things you played down in front of you to sort of link up and sync up together and sort of combo well together. It was all about finding cool card combos. And then the other interesting thing was um, cards would sort of slide to the left and eventually fall away and you would lose that ability, lose that synergy. And so it was about sort of planning and stuff as your cards were sliding and falling into lost knowledge. Um, well, this uh, expansion, the Ancient, uh, the ancient Knowledge uh, Heritage expansion, comes with two main elements, uh, 16 solo mo mode cards. So the, the original game was a two to four player game. So now there is a solo mode for the game. So if you want to try Ancient Knowledge, but you don't have anybody else to play with, you can do it on your own now. Um, it also includes um, 36 new builder cards, 12 new technology cards that you shuffle into the decks, making them 25% larger. So just more cards to explore, more uh, combos to discover uh, in Ancient Knowledge. Uh, Hachette Games, in association with Scorpion Masque, is releasing Sky Team Turbulence. Um, Sky Team was one of the most popular games that came out last year. It was in my top two player games. We got a lot of expansions this month for some of my top games of last year. I'm just realizing this in the moment as I'm going. I keep saying, like, this was in my top. This was in my top. Well, Sky Team was one of the best two-player games of last year. It was a cooperative two-player only game where you were playing as a, as a pilot and co-pilot assigning dice um, Secretly, you would roll your dice behind a privacy screen and then you would have to place them out one, one, by, one, one by one um, without talking and you were trying to land a plane safely. Um, so this um, Sky Team Turbulence, it's a small sort of rip open pack, but one of the things that Sky Team did really well is it had um, different airports that you would play through and each of those airports could increase the game and difficulty and stuff like that, add new challenges. So this adds a bunch of new airports uh, to the game. It also adds some new rules and modules to make the game harder. Uh, for instance, there is now turbulence, there is low visibility, there is alarms that you have to deal with. Uh, just sort of adding more challenge, more depth, uh, and then adding more replayability with the different airports that you can play through here. Uh, plays two players only in, you know, playing through one airport, one scenario is like 15 to 20 minutes and you can keep playing uh, beyond that. It's probably like a higher, uh, higher end of lightweight game, I would say, Sky Team. Japanime Games is releasing Tanto Cuore Memento Mori. That's fun to say, huh? Tanto Cuore Memento Mori. I think they probably did that on purpose. Um, this is a standalone expansion, plays two to four players in 30 to 60 minutes, and it is a sort of, uh, you know, higher end of lightweight game or lower end of medium weight game. Um, it's standalone expansion, meaning that this is fully compatible with other Tanto Quare content, but you don't need other Tanto Quare content to play this game. If you just bought this box, you can play it, but you can also combine it with other stuff. Uh, Tanto Quare is a Japanese deck building game that's a little bit like um, Dominion. It has some of the similar mechanisms, kind of a classic deck building game. Well, in this expansion, you are players uh, that are rushing into complete dilapidated rooms in Twilight Manor. You're trying to avoid the ghosts and perform seances to help with your goals. But the spirits are not always willing to play along. They can at times go out of their way to mess up your strategy if they turn evil. So if you like um, deck building games or if you want sort of a Halloween themed game, if you want a new Halloween themed game for the season, then check out this Tanto Quare Memento More Twilight Manor from Japanime Games. 
Uh, Leader Games is releasing a couple of expansions to their uh, game ARCs. Uh, so ARCs uh, hit retail in October. I talked about it in my Best Games Coming to Retail video, which you are welcome to check out if you haven't already. Uh, the base game was sort of essentially just that. It was a way to play the game standalone, just playing through ARCs. It combines uh, trick-taking, card-driven me mechanism with a bunch of sort of area control, combat, exploration in space out on this big, big board. Um, and the expansions, two of them, uh, are very different. One is Leaders and Lore. This is like a small mini expansion, like a pack. Uh, and it even probably comes in the base game for some people. Uh, two to four players, 60 to 120 minutes, a medium weight game. Um, but this adds uh, leaders, which give you sort of a, um, a new asymmetric ability. And there are wild twists um, to add to the, the base and campaign game with new lore cards. So it's just a bunch of cards you're adding to the game uh, with this uh, ARCs leaders and lore pack. Um, but the main expansion that they're releasing for ARCs this month is the Blighted Reach expansion. And you might have just heard me mention that the, uh, the Leaders in Lore adds stuff to the base and campaign game. Well, the campaign version of the game comes in this Blighted Reach expansion. So if you want to play ARCs, all you need is the base game and you have a bunch of uh, a great game with a bunch of replayability and stuff like that. But you can turn ARCs into a campaign by getting this campaign box. And in fact, the campaign box is even bigger than the base game box and adds more complexity to the game. Uh, it plays uh, two to four players uh, and uh, it is a heavier weight game now. Instead of ARCs is probably a medium plus weight game. Uh, now with this Blighted Reach expansion, it is a heavyweight game for sure. Um, and it adds, as I mentioned, a campaign. So you are playing through scenarios and the game is changing based on the decisions that you make uh, as you go along. Uh, it says, as you complete objectives and make critical decisions, the campaign grows and changes. For instance, if you destroy a world, its refugees might flood the galaxy in your next game. If you find your society driven to a state of collapse, you can even abandon your home world and play the next game operating out of a long, lone flagship. So um, each session of the campaign um, plays in about two hours, but there's a bunch of different sessions, a bunch of episodes that make up a sort of epic trilogy. So if you want like a bunch of story, you can play through the the whole game and, and really get a lot of lore and story and stuff behind the game of ARCs. Paverson Games is releasing Distilled Cask Strength. Uh, Distilled was a great uh, game that came out last year all about diff brewing different alcohols from around the world, distilling different alcohols. And so you were buying different ingredient cards and sort of being able to shuffle them together and try to get the ingredients that you need to make different alcohols, different spirits. And one of the fun things about uh, Distilled that I liked a lot was I got to learn about some of these spirits from around the world that I don't really get exposed to that much here in the United States. And so I thought that was pretty fun. It was, you know, it was really, it was a really fun game, but also educational uh, as well. Um, well, this distilled cast strength is just a, a, a sort of small micro expansion, a little box, but it has a lot of stuff in the box. Plays one to five players, 30 to 150 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. Um, so it adds, uh, it adds four new parts to the game of distilled. It adds new distillery upgrades. It adds special flavors. It adds upgraded premium ingredients and it adds an exciting new dynamic market mechanic. So they, you know, it's a small box, but it's got a bunch of stuff in there and adds a, a lot of different uh, replayability. The dynamic market is a brand new element to the game and presents players with more economically driven decisions that will arise and change throughout the game. Ooh, that sounds pretty fun. That is distilled cask strength. 
Renegade Game Studios is releasing a couple of expansions to Heroescape. So Heroescape just came out in uh, August or September. Uh, and it is sort of a re-implementation of an old 20-year-old version of the game, Heroescape. And in the game, you are uh, building sort of a modular terrain, and there's three-dimensionality to the terrain, and, and you're drafting your, you know, armies and then fighting each other. I mean, that's the whole idea, is it's sort of like a, you know, a combat game, but overall this fun uh, terrain that you can build yourself. Uh, so the first expansion I'll talk about here is... Revna's Rebuke, Iron Licked Viscerat, and Necrotech Wraith Riders Army Expansion. Uh, plays two players only, and it's a lighter weight game. This is just adding four new, highly detailed, and fully assembled figures uh, to the game. So different sort of factions, armies that you can, you know, troops that you can add to your ar army. And I will note that uh, Renegade Game Studios is selling both an unpainted version and a painted version. So if you want really nice painted miniatures, you can get that, but you also can spend less and not and get unpainted miniatures. Uh, and then the other one that they uh, are releasing is Heroescape Revna's Rebuke Kyrie Warriors Army Expansion. Uh, and this comes with uh, five new highly detailed and fully assembled uh, figures um, to add to your uh, options for building your, uh, selecting your army and building your battlefield and stuff like that. These are all, uh, they're, they're going to be releasing a lot of content for Heroescape. And so this is, these are compatible with everything that came before and everything that will come after this for sure. Restoration Games uh, is releasing Thunder Road Vendetta Carnival of Chaos expansion. Um, one of the things I want to mention is that uh, they are hoping that this comes out at the end of October, but did let me know that it could slide into November. So it'll either be at the end of the month, this month, and if it isn't because of shipping delays and things like that, then it will be in November, but I decided... To include it this month just because they think there's a possibility that it comes out this month. Uh, plays two to five players uh, and it is a medium weight game. Um, Thunder Road Vendetta is, uh, as Restoration do Games does, is a sort of re-implementation, uh, a re-release of an old game. Uh, and it is a pretty wild game where you are racing across a board and launching off of jumps and smashing into each other and you know there's a bunch of chaos as you race uh for sure and so the carnival of chaos expansion offers a new way to play instead of just sort of race racing to a finish line players race their cards into an arena while collecting wild party favors, powerful super weapons, and precious scrap along the way. And the, the winner is not the person that um, you know reaches the finish line first. The person is the surviving player who has the most scrap at the end of the game. There's no finish line in this version. So uh, it also uh, includes a full set of vehicles and a dashboard so you can add a fifth player uh, to the regular base game. So if you've only been playing with four players, uh, definitely, you know, Thunder Road feels like it needs more players rather than less. I'd rather play this game at five players than I would at two because it's all kind of just about the chaos. And there is a lot of chaos in Thunder Road Vendetta for sure. So if you want a new way to play or if you want to add a fifth player, check out Carnival of Chaos. Steve Jackson Games is releasing a couple of expansions for Munchkin, uh, we have Munchkin Dead and Deader, plays three to six players in 60 to 120 minutes, and it is a lightweight card game. Munchkin is sort of one of the classic take that, screw each other over card game, right? You are just all kind of fighting each other and trying to screw each other over. Uh, Dead and Deader is a 56 card expansion that adds more undead to your deck. So if you like the idea of undead stuff in Munchkin, then check out Dead and Deader. And they're also releasing, releasing Munchkin Taken for Granite. Uh, this is also three to six players, 60 to 120 minutes, and it is a 56 card expansion for Munchkin. Uh, combines a ton of earth and a pebble of magic into a legion of the weirdest, wackiest constructs 
you've ever seen. So if you want more, if you're a Munchkin fan and you just like Take That Games where you're screwing each other over, then check out these two uh, expansions for Munchkin. All right, Steve Jackson Games is also releasing a number of expansions to Car Wars 6th Edition. Um, Car Wars is a game where you are, you know, it's a little bit like Thunder Road Vendetta where you are sort of buying all these weapons for your cars and then racing and destroying each other's cars. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of ways to upgrade your cars and all that sort of stuff. So first up we have uh, Car Wars 6th Edition Aggressive Arsenal. Uh, this is a single player expansion that comes with 40 cards to add to your collection. So you can keep uh, customizing your game and your car with options for weapons, structure, accessories, terrain, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and it is a uh, plays in 120 minutes, and it is a sort of medium weight game. Uh, they're also releasing Car Wars Sixth Edition Sonic Strike. This also 120 minutes solo player expansion, medium weight. This adds 40 different new cards to your collection. Uh, it adds Sonic weapons to bring your opponents to a screeching halt. Uh, and also say hello to six new crew members and take advantage of their unique abilities. Um, and then lastly, we have Car Wars 6th Edition Tailgate Trouble. This is also a single player expansion, 120 minutes. Uh, and inside this one are 32 cards and one sheet of tokens originally included in the dropped weapons pack, as well as the Kinetic Diffuser, from road tiles and off-road suspension from playmat number one. So this adds new weapons, structures, accessories, all that sort of stuff as well. So if you want to, you know, customize your car with weapons and smash them into other people and stuff like that, then check out Car Wars. Stonemeyer Games is releasing the first expansion to Apiary. This is called Expanding the Hive. Uh, in the theme of this month of expansions, which is, uh, you know, the games games that were my top games of the year last year, Apiary was my number one game of the year last year. This was my favorite game of 2023, Apiary, and this is its first expansion. This expansion uh, plays one to five players in 60 to 90 minutes, and it is a medium weight game. And really, this expansion just adds more to the base game. It doesn't add any new mechanisms. It doesn't change gameplay at all. It adds new tiles for you to explore, new um, cards for you to use uh, to your benefit. Uh, the biggest thing that it changed is the frames. So in the base game, there were these frames that you could add on to your um, on into your sort of spaceship. And the frames were all the same. Every frame was the same. Well, now this comes with 15 unique frames, meaning you can add a frame to your spaceship and now it comes with different abilities. If you cover it up with tiles, you can get different abilities. Um, whereas in the base game, every time you covered up something, it was the same ability. Every frame was the same. So, uh, yeah, if you want more content, for Apiary, and I don't, I didn't even mention, Apiary is a great worker placement game, and one of the sort of hooks of the game is when your worker gets bumped off of a spot, it ticks up in power. A one becomes a two, a two becomes a three, and higher, uh, you know, higher numbered bees can do more cool abilities at the different worker placement spots. And in fact, some spots are reserved for four power bees. There are some things you can only do with four power bees, and so, I love the aspect of it because it was a worker placement game where you weren't blocking anybody out, but it made a hard choice of do you want to actually go bump somebody else's worker and, and make it stronger for them? And so, yeah, it's just a great worker placement game, and this is its first expansion. Stronghold Games is releasing Terraforming Mars Automa. Um, this is a solo-only expansion for the game Terraforming Mars. So the original game, Terraforming Mars, uh, could play solo. Uh, I should also say it's a medium weight game and Terraforming Mars uh, probably needs no information uh, from me at this point because it is in the top 10 of all time on BGG and it is a very, very popular game. And there was a solo version in the original game, but this is a different 
solo experience. So in the original game, the solo mode was you were racing against the clock. But now the Automa lets you compete against corporations run by algorithms and special cards and makes it possible for you to add any expansions to create the challenge you are looking for. So just a new way to play Terraforming Mars uh, solo. So yeah, if you love the game and don't get it to the table enough, then you can now you can. Wise Wizard Games is releasing an expansion to their game Sorcerer. This is Sorcerer Endbringer. Uh, this plays one to three players, uh, and it is a medium weight game. Um, Sorcerer, it should be known, was a two to four player game, but really was meant as a sort of two player head to head uh, combat game. You were playing cards and rolling dice and fighting each other. Now, instead of being a head to head or a competitive game, this is making Sorcerer a cooperative game for one to three players. You are teaming up and fighting against a crazed demigod known as an Endbringer. And there are a number of Endbringers in the game, so there's going to be some replayability uh, in that way. Also, um, you know, this does have a solo version, so you can just play against these uh, bad guys yourself if you want to. Uh, if you like... Um, you know, sort of smash up. Sorcerer has been c compared to like smash up, but with like cool gothic artwork and stuff like that. And so this is taking that game and making it cooperative uh, so you can fight against a bunch of bad guys. So there we go. That's uh, That was 23 um, expansions that are coming out in the month of October. So I hope you found something that you liked. I hope you, uh, you know, there's obviously a bunch that I'm excited about because some of my top games of the year last year are getting expansions. Uh, as always, you're welcome to support the series um, by checking out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Grant's Game uh, And thanks for liking and subscribing and stuff like that. I'll be back with more retail content soon. Thanks, everybody.